Hello and welcome. I am Ben the Best Five, and I am coming at you with yet more Kerbal Space Program content. Now, this video you might have noticed, or you might not have noticed, depending on how observant you are, is going to be a little bit different from my regular content. Usually, I do a career playthrough where I find ways to complete missions or unlock parts or, or set up for the future or whatever in the most efficient way possible. However, for this mission, that is not what I'm doing. I am in fact taking an investigation, or more to a point, talking about and demonstrating some real world stuff while uh, kind of doing a bit of a mock up of it on Kerbal Space Program, do something a little bit interesting, and see how you guys like it. Now, some of you who are more into real world rocketry might have noticed that that rocket I am launching is in fact a version of the Ariane 6, which hasn't been launched yet, however, is scheduled to debut very, very soon. And that was the 4 booster version, uh, just simply because I elected to launch the 4 booster version because I'm launching two payloads here. The payloads themselves are completely arbitrary and this is a different save to my regular one. It's a sandbox save, not a career save. And what this video is about is in fact the future of Ariane Space and the ESA, I guess, and some statements that they made. Plus it also coincides very nicely to the ESA um, parts um, being released onto Kerbal Space Program, making this video all the easier to produce. Now the ESA said that um, that they are in fact going to start focusing on reusability um, because, well, they quite frankly can't compete with some of the companies like SpaceX, which are in fact reusing their boosters and cutting down costs, making them a far more profitable and better option for competitor, well, for customers, meaning that they're in fact starting to eat up all of the competition and take away the profits of Ariane Space. And considering that Ariane Space, you know, needs profits to keep running because they are funded partially by the ESA, they are, you know, primarily a, a business which looks to make profits, so because of this, they're in fact looking at how can we better compete with our with our um, new, comp uh, new competition. And the way that they've decided that they're going to do this is in fact by by uh, looking into reusability. Now we have nothing set in concrete, which is why what I'm doing is just uh, my best guess as to what will happen. I basically just equipped some, uh, mounted some basic uh, recovery equipment to an Ariane 6 mock-up because basically they've made two statements. And one of them they said that they were we're going to build the Ariane 6 because, you know, it's an important step or something like that. But they, they said they've already started working on conceptualizing the Ariane 7, which will feature recovery. And an earlier statement, actually, uh, they, they said that they were going to focus on making the Ariane 6 reusable. So I figured that, you know, upcoming there would actually be a version of the Ariane rocket with a, a recoverable booster, so something like we've seen similar to um, that which is used by SpaceX or Blue Origin in the way that they land their boosters. So that's in fact what I'm going to be demonstrating here. I'm putting, I'm just putting the AR payload featuring two, two satellites, two just generic, I don't know, satellites. We'll just say that they're for uh, their, their partners, um, Kutelsat. Um, so they're in orbit and I'll just because the ESA does mostly, um, you know, primarily uh, feature, well, they 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 do a, a lot of their missions are sending commercial satellites to geostationary orbit. That's basically what I did for this mission. Is I is I basically selected an uh, Ariane six style rocket, uh, made the boost recoverable by adding landing legs as well as. Uh, air brakes to help slot down for a landing. I'm just going to perform a bit of a rough touchdown. It's not going to be perfect because, well, and I have t had to quick save and, and reload it a few times because, well, I'm not a computer. I can't process all of the massive amounts of data as fast as it's coming in in order to make a perfect landing. You know, I have to do all of the, the, the stuff that the computers have to do manually inside my head which is definitely a tough ask, so yes, it, it does look a bit chopped up, but that's why, because, you know, I'm not a computer, and I don't want to do the entire re-entry 
again and again and again. I just won't repeat the landing until I get it right. So that's why some of the footage is chopped up a bit. Anyway, um, I reoriented the booster using the re the built-in reaction wheels because I, I could have mounted some reaction control systems to it. Now I know that the current Ariane 6 rocket does have RCS on board, uh, but I think it's primarily on the upper stage and it's used to reorient it, but uh, I elected not to. Um, I also had the idea of maybe doing this mission uh, on realism overhaul, but that just kind of got a bit messy because um, uh, there, w there aren't really any suitable engines to replicate such a mission so I opted against that anyway um, as you can s see I am, am in fact going for a land landing on land now realistically um, the kind of jump that I've gone is basically all the way from South America to uh, Africa, because they launch from South America, from basically along the equator, you know, to get those nice and equatorial polar orbits. But yes, that's the kind of jump that we're going for, you know, a along Kerbin, which is rather unrealistic. So they probably wouldn't do that with their booster. Instead, they'd probably have a drone ship. But uh, making a drone ship and then sending it out and catching boosters on it is rather difficult. So for the purposes of this particular launch, we'll just pretend that the the far off land where I'm landing on is a booster. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just because it's basically the the equivalent of it's just Kerbal Space Program not really being a practical environment for that, you know. So yes, the the actual landing itself is not particularly difficult. We just uh, slow it down as much as possible using the air and then use some puffs of the engine because it's actually coming in rather slowly and with those engine puffs we can actually then just slow our velocity down to zero and touch down on the surface and then you know in the real world a recovery team would then attend to it and then the the, the drone ship or or whatever they're using to bring it back would then well would yeah, just come back via the sea, you know, the way boats do, without hopefully main complications. And then this obviously reduces the cost because you're not having to build a new booster every time you launch. So this is why the ESA would be potentially looking at just just bring it back to what happened earlier. Anyway, now that I have shown the booster landing, uh, when I actually play it on Kerbal Space Program, it it did flip over, but that's because I picked some, well. If it was a drone ship, it wouldn't do that because they're nice and flat for landing on. But that random hill wasn't very particularly flat for landing on, so you know it it kind of fell over a bit. But actually, all that fell off was actually the um, the um, uh, air brakes because it landed on air brake. But uh, yeah. Anyway, what's going on here is um, I'm sending the the two satellites off into a well a roughly geostationary orbit around um, around Kerbin and then I'm going to release them deorbit the upper stage and then let the built-in engines on the satellites actually take them up and put them in a geostationary orbit the same way that the ESA does missions in real life uh, just because I figured that that would be a pretty good demonstration if I I, I could use that as a pretty good demonstration for this um, for this mission because that's a fairly standard mission that I see the ESA performing quite a lot. Now you'll see me doing a spin up because they do do that in real life, so I figured I might as well replicate that. But I forgot how strong reaction wheels are in this game, how they're a little bit overpowered. So I did one, but it got a bit, a little bit too, you know, frantic. Also, one small thing that I really wish the that the ESA update had brought is in real life the ESA has a very special kind of I guess you could say almost fairing cover that they put between payloads uh, in inside the fairing to uh, basically just let them stack them on top of each other um, that would actually be a really nice addition to the game because it would mean that um, yeah that um, the the payloads could actually sit on top of each other nicely um, without having to have you know floating decouplers which is not you know necessarily a nice aesthetic 
Plus it would add to the realism which I was going for here. I did actually, you know, experiment with some um, alternative ideas like using fairings to build them, but they just didn't they just didn't, you know, fit the bill well enough. I didn't feel like they, they did a good enough job of of actually, you know, of what they were meant to do, so I opted against actually including one for the video, even though it would have yeah. Anyway, here is the booster just deorbiting because that's a responsible thing to do. And here we have some some just some, some footage I'd like to show of the satellites raising their orbits to a full geostationary orbit, something you don't normally see. And with this happening, that's a pretty cool looking screen I reckon. A pretty good spot for an outro screen. So I'd just like to say thank you for watching this video. It's saying a little bit different to what I normally do. If you enjoyed this kind of uh, content, then let me know, and I'll perhaps look into changing up my content more often and uh, including more stuff like this. Thank you for watching. If you, if you did like this content, then please leave a like or comment and tell me why this was better or why my usual content's better. Um, other than that, yeah, if you do want to see more content like this, or if you like my voice as so many people tell me, then do please subscribe to support me. Other than that, please have a good day, you know, thanks for watching, also do consider clicking one of the links on screen about now, and yeah, farewell.